Good morning and welcome. It is good to see you. Glad you are here. Let us stand and call one another to worship. Praise the God who has loved us from the day we were created, who loves us this day, and who shall love us until the close of the age. Holy, 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 God the Almighty, early in the morning we praise your majesty. God's grace has been made known to us in the Lord Jesus. In Christ we know recreation, God has called us together, saints and sinners, to be in the presence of the Holy One. Through the communion of the Holy Spirit, we are made one people, called to praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Number 136. pray with me. Creator God, we thank and praise you for the many gifts of your creation, for sun and moon and water and sky, stars in the heavens and creatures on the earth. We thank and praise you for trusting us to be your special creation, made in your image, given responsibility for this earth. Help us to see where we may walk more gently and live more compassionately, that all your earth might find in us your very image, nurturing and caring in all that we do. Amen. Um, the book of Genesis, almost starting at the very beginning. 
I'm going to read in chapter 1 um, all the way down to verse, through verse 13 and then pick it up again at verse 24. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind, bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. Skip down to verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps upon the earth, everything that has the breath of life I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. No, I'll read it. So several of you have asked, how was your, how was your um, continuing ed event in Minneapolis? And I have to say it was absolutely fantastic. Um, it's not something where I can say this is what I learned so much, but John Hoban gave me the, the word. It was inspira inspirational. It was really inspiring for all of us who were our preachers. Um, one of those who were the preacher was um, Bishop Curry, 
who's the person who did the wedding for Meghan and Harry, remember? Black man, you may, if you watched it, you, you saw it, and there's some really funny stories that he told. His lecture was on um, uh, Jeremiah 17 and remembering our roots. And while I've written the sermon my own way, he inspired me with this text. I, um, he began at verse 7, I'm beginning at verse 5. S chapter 17, verse 5 through 8. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They are like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched in places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. This is the word of the Lord. May God add God's blessing to it. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Pray that the words that I speak are faithful to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that that which you hear is that which the Spirit intends for your ears this day. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I've been working on some roots this week. Um, some of them took a bit of effort. As I thought about that, uh, as I did that, I thought about our reading from Jeremiah. Some weeds, let me tell you, have deep roots. Mowing the parsonage grass this week in the front yard, the grass is beginning to dry up. But the weeds, they're still growing. They, those weeds must have deeper roots than the sod. I'm also hoping to add some additional color to the flower beds in front of the parsonage. The roots of that maple tree nearer the surface were not too difficult to clear out. But the deeper I dug, the stronger the roots, and I could not dig them out. I had to cut them out in order to plant my plants. I know, even deeper in the soil, those roots are bigger and stronger. And frankly, I'm grateful for that. I want that huge maple to have strong roots. I want it to stay standing, remain standing when the wind blows, in the times of drought, I want it to stay standing during snow or ice storms. My biggest joy this week, my biggest joy was meeting your adult children and grandchildren. They came to help move the trash to treasure items from vehicles and from the basement. We often wonder about the future of the church. And as I thought about these kids, these young adults coming back, I thought, they remember. I'm sure they remember some of their Sunday school lessons. Miss Jenny, it'll be good. Miss Mary, it's going to be good. Jana, it's going to be good. They remember, I'm sure, especially the creation story and a few gospel stories, especially Christmas and Easter. 
The younger adult member, family members returned to help their grandparents do what was important to their family and their church. There are some roots that may run deeper than we realize. This creation story that I'm sure they remember reminds us of who God is and who God created us to be. Now, we may have different interpretations, and you're hearing already that some of those interpretations from me and from the kids, there's different interpretations. But the bottom line is that somehow God created order out of the chaos. And that is deeply rooted in us. The stories of Christmas and Easter remind us that that God has come to be among us as a human being. And that God brings new life even to that which seems to be dead. These stories are remembered deep in our soul. Creation, God's presence, new life God offers to Jesus and to us. These are the deep roots that strengthen us when life is tough. Friends, it is the deep roots of our faith that can give us solace and hope in a weary world. Hope in a weary world was the theme of our our conference, our continuing ed um, event. So... For it is deep roots of faith which can give us solace and hope in a weary world. A strong faith is like a tree planted by the waters with roots that run deep, so deep that when the drought comes, it remains strong. Our work today is to strengthen our roots and the roots of our children and grandchildren and even great-grandchildren We need to keep on going deeper ourselves. We need that closer walk with Jesus and God, our creator. Jesus fully trusted God. Jesus had hope, even in the weary world of his day. For many, the church included, knew and knows the long-term effects of COVID. Churches are smaller and older. That's across the board. Church members wonder what the future holds. And we know people are still coughing, sick in ways that they were not before COVID. For some, COVID has caused broken or more distant relationships. Our youth were deeply affected by the ramifications of COVID. There is cause for anxiety, and yet, when the roots of our faith and trust in God are strong, we have hope. There's also been anxiety about the division in our nation, yet this week, we saw our government working together to alleviate a coming crisis. You may not agree with what came about, but at least we worked together. And this week, other times that the government worked together was also named again for us. We may not have noticed that just a little bit of signs of hope are there. We may not have noticed that there's some things coming back together. There are some deep roots built into our democracy. And I also truly believe it is the deep roots of the people of Ukraine which causes them to keep fighting. Deep roots of faith and the love for their land. What do we need to do to strengthen our roots? to deepen our faith and trust in God. 
I'm privileged to have someone, people say to me every once in a while, you know, I pray every day. Praying is really important to me. My faith is really important to me. If that's not true for you, well, let's work toward that. We also, I think, all of us need to turn more often to the stories of the Old Testament and the Gospel. It's there that we have that deep taproot of faith. We're starting to clean out the basement, right? In hope, in hope for something not yet completely revealed. As we're doing that, I was there with Mary, um, and I saw this poster, and I said, we need to keep that. It showed from the beginning of Abraham on through, I believe, Jesus. 3,000 years of history. Did you know that there were 3,000 years of history? Wow. Abraham, probably 1,800 years before Christ. What a history. David, about the year 1000. What we call zero or six or 33 is the time of Jesus. Wow. What a deep taproot we have as people of faith. And then there's, there's 175 years of this church serving the community and worshiping God, that too is a deep taproot of faith. We need to share the good news of Jesus Christ more often through the ways we live and and through the ways we talk and through our actions. We need to let people see the importance of our faith to us. In, um, and maybe I've told you already, there was a time when Turkey said if you were a Christian and trying to convince others, the, the Muslim, to become Christian, you had to leave. Those missionaries all had to go. They had to leave the country, and I don't remember the year of that right now, probably 80s or 90s, 1980s or 90s. And um, the United Church of Christ missionaries were allowed to stay. And the reason they were allowed to stay is because they had learned how to share their faith without words. Now, that's not the ideal, but they had learned to share and be Christian without forcing or putting it on the Muslim people. They had learned how to do good so that their faith, we know their faith was shining, but the Muslim were comfortable in what we were doing and allowed us to stay. And I know that in our society, it's sometimes hard to use the words, but let people see. I'm gonna pick on our teachers. Kids know if you're a person of faith. They see it. Even if you don't say a word about God, the kids know it if you share in the way you live your life. It is good for us to take time to evaluate the depth of our roots. When they're not very deep, it's easy for someone or something or some event to knock us over. When they're not very deep, we think we've got to do it all on our own. 
what one of the authors I was reading last night was saying. We have two concerns. What somebody else says and tells us to do, that can push us over. What we think we can do without God can push us over. Without the depth of our faith, we lose hope and the desire to persevere. When the roots of our faith are not very deep, we fail to see when relief comes. Shallow roots also miss seeing what God is doing in a weary world. Deep roots, deep roots, and then those deep roots trust God was true for all of creation, huh? Isn't that what the the animals, the, the vegetation, all of them were created. And somehow, I think they knew their creator. Deep roots trust God. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And yes, my friends, there are windstorms, snowstorms, ice storms, there's drought in our lives. Yet God remains with us to comfort and strengthen us. Jesus shows us the way, the truth, and the life. And the Holy Spirit has been sent to remind us of the love of God in Jesus Christ. And to guide us on our journey. Friends, I truly believe there is hope for a weary world whether that world is within your small world or out in the all of creation, there is hope. Amen. Let us pray. God, we don't always see the roots, not the roots of the trees. They are deep. Help us to show our faith. Help us to trust that in the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree. Even though we do not see what is yet to be, help us trust that you will make it known in the world Give us courage, God, in a weary world to live our faith and share our faith and to to trust that you will get us through whatever it is that is a struggle for us. Thank you, God, for all those who are teaching others whether or not we are teachers by trade, but for all the teachers in a, especially, for those who are sharing faith, sharing hope, sharing love with our students. God, thank you for a year that has ended with the kids all back in school, all striving to learn their best. Thank you for parents and grandparents who are helping our young ones to learn. And help our young ones to see, as those helpers did this week, those young helpers saw something in their parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. Help us to continue to make that evident in the world, that, that faith, that love, that peace. God, we pray this day for those who are struggling Help them to feel you near. We lift up to you 
in this Pride Month. All who are struggling with with their identity, who are struggling in this world to to be and be allowed to be who they are. Grant, O God, our care and acceptance of all, for you have created us, and you have created every one of us good. Let us, O God, Share our faith in your name. Amen. Let us respond to God's goodness with the giving of our gifts. Let us pray together. Thank you, O Lord, for moving the hearts of the people to give of themselves. May our offerings of service and commands of Lord give voice to your word for justice and peace in this world. May we grow more mindful to you, your our giving and our learning. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. In this congregation, all who believe in Jesus Christ are welcomed by Christ to come to this table. For it is Christ who is the host that comes and is among us. Let us pray. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to God, the Blessed Trinity. Praise to you, divine creator, forever our faithful God. Thankful for, we thank you for the gift of life, the beauty of nature, the structure of law, and the, your steadfast loving kindness. Praise to you, divine redeemer, Jesus our Lord and Savior. Thank you for sharing our human existence from birth through death to everlasting life. You have shown us the way worth emulating, bringing healing, justice, and hope to those most in need. Praise to you, divine sustainer, the one Jesus sent to guide and comfort. Thank you for the vision to see beyond the immediate and for giving us a calm in the midst of a storm, for the strength to build a renewed community 
and the courage to bring about any change necessary within our lives. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper and gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Holy God, Send your spirit upon these elements symbolizing your life and love that they might be for us the presence of the living Christ. Bless us and pour out your spirit upon us so that we too may be taken, blessed, broken, and given so that others might know the blessings of living in communion with you and one another. Through Christ Christ with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life that Christ gives. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Christ, our host, invites us to come, eat, and drink. Receiving the sacrament, whether you are at home or coming forward in the sanctuary, know that we eat and drink with our Savior and each other. Come, for all things are now ready. This is the feast of God for the people of God. Receive the blessing. May the presence of Christ, body and spirit, keep and preserve you to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray together. For the beauty of creation, the gift of life, and your presence in each of us, we give you thanks. Work through us so that we might be channels of your mission in the world. 
to build your community on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Our hymn is number 411, How Firm a Foundation. That is the good news. God will never forsake. Keep on growing those deep roots. Then you'll know. Then you'll know. Deep, deep in your heart that God loves you and will see you through. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Tony, thank you. Tony did not know he was playing solo today. <laughs>